بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد So we've reached the 18th chapter سورة الكهف سورة الكهف which has 110 verses and the meaning of the word الكهف is as we're told here جمعه كهوف وهو الغاء المغارة المغارة الواسعة في الجبل. So we're told that al kaf is the singular, kuhuf is the plural. We're told that it is a large cave that is within a mountain. So a large space, which is basically a cave, a large cave space within a mountain. Um, the reason why it is named al kaf. We're told in Firadu Surati bi dhikri qissati ashab al kaf because the story of those young folks who were in the cave that this is the chapter that mentions it and because it is such a miraculous story that the chapter as a whole has taken on this name of al kaf um, we don't know of any other names for this chapter besides al kaf with regards to its main objectives we're told العصمة من أنواع الفتن المذكورة في القصص الأربع فيها that the main objective is protection from the different forms of tribulation that are mentioned that are unique to each of the four stories within that chapter to each of the four now he mentions four but if we look at it we'll come to see that there's actually even more than four but basically the four of what are mentioned uh, perhaps more predominantly is the story of the youth in the cave which is the first and then secondly with regards to the two people in their, their, their two gardens the third being the story of Musa and Khidr alayhi salatu wasalam and the fourth being that of Dhul Qarnain alayhi salam so the different fitan, the different tribulations that took place in each of those and how to protect oneself uh, oneself with regards to them. The chapter, the reason for its revelation, we're told that it is a Meccan chapter and we don't have anything that tells us with regards to uh, why the, the chapter itself was revealed but we do have that which tells us about some of its verses that are authentic and why they were revealed. With regards to the virtues, we have three that are being mentioned here. So the first is ta'asimu min fitnati dajjal. The first is that, is, is that this chapter will protect us from the tribulations of the dajjal, the imposter, the false messiah, the antichrist. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man hafidh ashra ayatin min awwali surat al-kahf usima min al-dajjal. This hadith that Imam Muslim collects, the Prophet ﷺ taught whoever memorizes the first 10 verses from this chapter will be saved from the tribulations, from the tests of a dajjal the Antichrist, the false messiah, the imposter. Secondly, that it is light for the person who reads it. It is light for its companion. قال صلى الله عليه وسلم من قرأ سورة الكهف في يوم الجمعة أضاء له من النور ما بين الجمعتين الجمعتين He said صلى الله عليه وسلم whoever recites سورة الكهف on Friday that it will give them light until the next جمعة it will be a light between the two جمعات that it will illuminate for you that whole time frame and this hadith is authentic and it is collected by Imam al-Bayhaqi. The third and final virtue that we have is min awa'ili ma nazala min al-Qur'an. The hadith that, or the athar, pardon me, that Ibn Mas'ud mentioned, that it is from among the first of what was revealed of Qur'an to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, in that hadith of what Imam al-Bukhari collected, when he told us that it is the surahs of uh, Banu Israel or al-Isra, Al-Kaf, Maryam, Taha Al-Anbiya, that these five were from among the earliest chapters of the Qur'an that were revealed. Well, let's take a look now and see what is the 
relationship between the beginning of the chapter and the end. We're told, الحديث عن بشارة المؤمنين بالجنة That it is a glad tiding, a herald of good news to the believers of par for paradise. Basically, that the good news of paradise is being declared to the believers. فَقَالَ فِي فَاتِحَتِهَا وَيُبَشِّرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجَرًا حَسَنًا Allah Ta'ala begins it by saying, and the Qur'an it is a glad news, a glad tiding. It is for the believers, those who do good deeds, who practice righteousness, that for them there is certainly a beautiful reward and that beautiful reward is paradise it's understood that the beautiful reward is paradise and he says concluding the chapter he concludes the saying certainly those who believe and practice righteousness they do good deeds they will have Al Firdos, Jannatul Firdos, Paradise. And Al Firdos is considered to be the best of paradise. So even paradise is not a communism of all being one level, one thing, everything's the same. There's the entry level of paradise, which is in and of itself paradise, but then you have different levels of, and each level is better than the one before it and beneath it. The believers who practice righteousness and do good deeds for them is. The best of paradise, that's where they will be, uh, basically, that's where their abode will be, that's where they will descend, or that's where they will not descend, because paradise is above, but that's where basically they will, uh, they will call home. So we look at this, and we see that the good news is for those who believe, and they practice righteousness, they live righteously, they do good deeds. So belief is not enough that a person just says, I believe, and as far as deeds are concerned, there's nothing there. Nor is it enough that a person does good deeds, but they don't have belief. They do it for whatever other worldly types of reasons and benefits there may be, that their name can be put on something, that you know, uh, they can have it as some type of legacy, that you know, uh, they can be mem remembered by even after their death or otherwise. Rather, these two conditions are essential that the person believes. And this is what our declaration of Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah are, that we declare that there is no God besides Allah. It is only Allah that we believe and only Him that we worship. And it is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that we have accepted as our final Prophet and Messenger. The person who believes and they live righteously, Alhamdulillah, they are winners. Allah Ta'ala is promising them, even though they are imperfect, even though they are going to sin, even though they are going to have their issues. So long as they die in that state, Allah is promising them that they will be saved, that they will enter into paradise. But what about the relationship of Al-Kahf al-Isra? We're told, أُخْتُتِمَتْ الْإِسْرَاءُ بِالْحَمْدِ فَقَالَ سُبْحَانَ وَقُولِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ Surah Al-Isra ended, concluded with praising and thanking Allah Rabbu Al-Alameen, Allah Azza wa Jal says, and say all praise and thanks are for Allah. And he began Surah Al-Kahf, uh, Al pardon me, with Alhamd, saying, Alhamdulillahi alladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitab. And he began the chapter saying, All praise and thanks are for Allah, the one who has sent down to his worshipper, to his servant, the book, the Qur'an. So subhanAllah, the command to praise and thank Allah Azza wa Jal concludes, and it also begins the chapter right after it and we praise and thank Allahu Rabbul Alameen knowing that we can never praise and thank him enough but we praise and thank him as he teaches us and in doing so that we ask him Jalla wa'ala that he include us to be from among Al-Hamideen Adhaqireen Allah Kathiran those who praise and thank him who remember him abundantly Allahumma Ameen wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad